Check one, two. <clears throat> so here we are on the gorgeous beach over here at uh, Sturgeon Bay. Have to remember where I am. Hi there and welcome back to Northlight Photographic Workshops and uh, welcome back to my life in a snow globe here uh, in northern Michigan. It's that time of the year but uh, last time, last night there was a beautiful snowfall. We get this stuff called lake effect up here and I'm very close to the Lake Michigan here and uh, before the lake freezes over we tend to get a lot of, uh, you know, when the wind blows a certain direction you're either a have or a have not. Um, and what happens if the wind happens to be blowing in your specific direction that day, you can get snow for hours. And last night we were supposed to get about nine inches, but it ended up being about six. And uh, it's a gorgeous day. And I'm going to take you out there and we're going to, you know, we're going to drive around, going to maybe shoot a few shots, that kind of thing. But I don't know. It's too nice not to do a day out with you. So uh, stay tuned. It has just turned out to be such a beautiful day. Um, most of the clouds are disappearing quick. And it looks like they're uh, pretty much just hanging out here over the lake. So I'm kind of thinking what I'm going to do with you today is take you over to the lake and to the, uh, the beach maybe up on Sturgeon Bay. And I'm going to see what it's like up there. Because the lake hasn't frozen over yet. and. Uh, there might be some good movement in the water. At the very least, in these clouds that are hanging up over on the, uh, over the lake that I can see right now. And um, I think they would make uh, a really good subject for showing you a little bit of neutral density uh, filter work. Um, it's been something I've been thinking about doing here for a while. And as a matter of fact, I started it when I was over in Iceland but uh, it was such an incredible windy time that I couldn't hear any of the audio or anything. I'll show you some of that footage so if I this am. is what I end up doing. Uh, man, but it's just crazy. yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of ridiculous. I was trying to do this instructional video in these uh, hurricane winds. So that's what we'll get onto today. gotta say it's pretty incredible to be out here at the beach and to be the first one here in fresh snow driving along this doesn't happen to me all that often there's always somebody that beats me here but not today <laughs> so we're almost here um, pretty soon um, I'm gonna get set up over here okay we're gonna find something interesting to shoot and uh, we're gonna do some uh, neutral density slow shutter Thank you. 
Amazing. This is gonna be great. I'm at one of my favorite spots here where spring, uh, spring comes out, goes out into the lake, and it's always changing in here. It's, it's uh, forever changing. It's all sand, so depending on what the water's doing and the water level, that kind of thing, it changes the, uh, the shoreline in here, and it's always different. So uh, this is very cool to be here and be the only person here. I see some tracks over there, but I'm sure they're just deer tracks. So uh, I gotta get my stuff out here and we'll get to work. So I brought you over here to the beach at Sturgeon Bay. And uh, I'd like to show you this. This little magic bit of photographic equipment is called a neutral density filter. Now, you may already know what this is, and if you do, then you can just move on. But for those of you that don't, this is a magic little tool to have in your bag. Um, granted, as I said before, it's been overused a little bit, but it really does open up a whole new world for you. Um, by using this, you can add time to your photographs. Uh, you can capture time, basically and the movement of time, and the movement of the sky, and the movement of the water, and the movement of people through the frame, that kind of thing. Um, it allows you in bright light to slow your shutter down. Um, and the best ones are neutral. You want, you want to spend the money on this thing. Um, basically, this one here cost me about 100, 110 bucks. Uh, it's a B&W. Um, they make really good ones. Uh, I'm not, I, I make nothing from them, but they do make some of the best ones. Now the thing is, is that I use these a lot with black and white imagery, and I used to use them a lot with uh, my Hasselblad in film. Um, but you also can use them with color, obviously, but that's why you want it to be a really good, uh, good, good filter, is you want it to be neutral. Uh, you don't want it to add any kind of a color cast to your image, because you don't want to be co correcting for that. Uh, very often you have to correct a little bit of the color anyway afterward, but you just don't want to be correcting purples and pinks and things like that that are done by cheap glass and cheap filters. So when you do get to it and you do get your neutral density filters, definitely spend the money for it. Now this is also something that's a tool for a lot of drone, uh, drone, peop uh, drone pilots and drone photographers because what it allows you to do on the less expensive drones is it allows you to control, basically control shutter speed. Uh, some of the less expensive drones don't have shutter speed controls on them and in, in order to slow the shutter speed down on automatic uh, type sensor is by putting a neutral density filter on there and that has to slow the shutter speed down in order to get enough light into the sensor. So uh, anyway, what we do with this, in, in order to use this in, in still photography and in landscape photography, we just set up our shot uh, and once we have our shot set up, then we put it on the lens because as you can see, you really can't see anything through this. I mean, you have to look really hard on a really bright sunny day. Now, do not use this to look at the sun. Uh, I have to tell you that right off the bat is this is not that kind of a filter. Anyway, what you want to do is you want to get your shot set up ahead of time, obviously, because you're not going to be able to see through your viewfinder afterward. And once you have your shot set up, you screw this little puppy on there and you all of a sudden have cut 10 stops. Now, this is a 10 stop filter, of course. Now there are other ones, six stops, four stops, whatever you want. Uh, but I like the 10 stop because it allows me to slow the shutter down as much as possible. Now another thing is, is that you can control this shutter speed also with your ISO. So in a situation like today where it's really bright sun, I'm most likely going to want to use a lower ISO than I usually do. Now I normally shoot at a 400, but I'm guessing that today with a 400, even with this on, is probably going to give me, say, four seconds at maybe an F-22. Uh, I'd like to slow it down even more than that. So basically what I would do is cut back my ISO. And by cutting back your ISO, you're actually adding stops to the whole issue. So what happens is to say I've got a 10 stop filter and I go back to, I go from a uh, ISO of 400 back to an ISO of uh, 100, that gives me two stops. Or that you want to be aware of that as well. Now, if you're shooting with film, of course, you better do your math and figure this all out ahead of time. But if you're shooting digitally, you can look on your sensor after you've made the photograph and you can see what you've got. And we'll do that with a couple of photographs that I'm going to work through. Now, uh, what I've found here is a little scene that the light is, the sun is just coming on. I was waiting for that to happen. The sun is just coming on this little spring that comes out into the, the lake. And that's where I'm going to set up my shot and show you kind of what it is that I do with this neutral density filter. And then what I'm kind of hoping to do is take you on back to the studio afterward 
and we'll plug this thing into Lightroom, we'll plug the file into Lightroom and I'll show you what I do in post-processing in order to make it the image that I, uh, I, I foresee it to be. So uh, let's get to it. Now I know I'm in the shadow here, so I apologize for that on the video, but uh, my scene is coming into the sunlight and the puppy clouds are there just the way I want them and I do not want to miss this. So what I'm doing now is I've got my shot set up and I'm uh, going to take my neutral density filter now and make sure that I've got all my uh, all of my um, uh, ducks in a row here and I'll make sure that I've got my exposure set up correctly. Now again I'm down to ISO 100 I'm going to be shooting this for 15 seconds at an uh, at a, at a, um, aperture of f16. I put my neutral density filter back on. I'm ready to go and now what I'm doing is I'm waiting for the light to come across the scene the way that I want it to. Now granted I've got 15 seconds to work with here but I want the light to be just right and the sun has kind of gone on, or the cloud has kind of gone over a sun here but it's going to be coming out soon. So I'm going to make a test exposure to begin with. Again, ISO 100, F16, 15 seconds. Nice. Okay, I think I can add a little bit of time here. Now being I'm going slow, I'm going to add one stop. So 15 seconds, one stop, that's 30 seconds. Here we go. There we go. Oh yeah, and see now my sky is starting to move a little bit as well. So, off comes the neutral density filter. I'm going to put a little bit more sky into my image. And what do I always say? Keep that horizon straight. Maybe I don't always say that, but I'm going to be saying that. Nothing to me is more annoying than seeing a landscape photograph where the horizon is crooked. Looks like the lake is going to run off the page. Okay, sun's going to be coming back out here for me in a minute. <clears throat> and I am actually going to back off my... Uh, ISO a little bit more. I'm going to go down to an ISO of 64. That'll allow me to slow things down and allow me to close the shutter down, uh, close the aperture down a little bit more. Here we go. We're right at the edge of the sun now. Cloud is just passing by and it should be coming out here. Ah, here it comes. Slowly coming up the beach. Ah, here we go. Exposure time. Remember, now I'm at 30 seconds, but I'm at ISO 64. This is great because there's some deer tracks running right through the shot as well. Hopefully they'll show up. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Now I'm going to close down a little bit more. I'm going to go to a full-on F22, make another exposure. This is good. It's a really nice image as well. I'll show you in a minute. Nothing better than doing a demonstration like this and getting a pretty cool shot. Yeah. Wow. There we go. Okay. So, you want to give yourself a lot of latitude and a lot of things to play with. Yeah, there we go. I'm also losing my uh, sunlight again. So I'm going to play around with a few more exposures. And what I plan to do is take you back to the studio with me now and we will uh, we'll work on one of these, the one that I deem to be the best. And we'll work on it and I'll show you what I'll do in post-processing. 
It's good to be back in the studio where it's nice and warm. And as you can see, it's gotten dark outside. Um, I took the liberty of uh, downloading what we uh, shot this afternoon so that I didn't have to take you through that. Plus, I have to admit, I took a shower to warm up a bit. It was really cold out there, and I got about as cold as I could get in my uh, toes. And uh, they're still catching up right now, but I'm wiggling them. You can't see them. They're off camera right now, wiggling down below us. But, but anyway, uh, I've, got my, um, I've got the things downloaded, as I said. And as you can see here on the screen, I, I just I've picked out a few here that I'm going to choose from. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do is go between one of these here on the, uh, as you can see on, on the screen. Now, you can see this one here. I'll open that up. And that was the one where we were... Um, where we were kind of waiting for the sun to come down the beach, you know, and it's a nice image, but in comparison to what I was able to do when the sunlight came out, um, it was much better. So I'll, I'll just flip along here and you can see that right now. Um, and it's quite a nice shot in its own right, uh, but it is going to need a little bit of processing. And, um, but you can see what I'm talking about with the sky moving and, and capturing some movement in the sky. And this image right here is one that I really like a lot and I'm thinking about working on but there's also this one here, which was a little bit uh, less exposure. I think you can remember me doing that. And see, so, you now what happened is here, I brought in a lot more detail in the foreground and in the snow. So what I might do is use this image because I can process and I can bring things lighter where I need them rather than an image like this, where I could probably still recapture some of that because these are shot in raw format. Uh, but actually, you know, I like this cloud structure in this one a little bit more than I like in this one. Um, so actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through both of them. And, and that way, I'll show, you, I'll show you what I would do with either one. Now, granted, this one that you're looking at right now would be considered a little bit underexposed. But because it's a raw file, I can really work on this file and I can pull things out of it that are in there that you can't really see. Um, now with this file, probably the same kind of uh, uh, thing. Uh, uh, there's probably a lot of detail down in here that you, that you can't really see right now in the image as it's presented right now in the program. But it's there. The, Im the information is in there and the detail is in there. And I can also reclaim that. So like I say, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to work on both of these. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the, the, the darker one first to show you what I, what I like to do on these. Now, what I do is I, I, I like to work in Lightroom, as any of you that have been watching me uh, know. Um, I like Lightroom a lot, um, not only because it allows me um, a lot of control over the image before I take it into Photoshop for its finish. Um, it also allows me a cataloging system, and I really like to do that. Like, as you can see here, I've got this cataloged here, and they're in a certain folder now on my computer, but I have a Drobo that's pretty much right under the camera where you're viewing me from right now. And that Drobo has all of my information and all of my different files on it. And normally, if I go in there, it's almost like looking at a light table of the history of the last 15 years of my digital imagery and also of my film imagery, which I've taken the time to digitize a lot of the more important images. So um, anyway, I really, like, uh, I really like Lightroom for that reason. Now, I know that there's people watching this that have their own favorites. You know, some people like to use the browse feature in um, Photoshop, and uh, some people like to use, I'm sure, um, uh, Capture One or other, uh, other image processing or image cataloging uh, systems. But I really like Lightroom for the simple fact that it's very uh, it's simple, it's intuitive, it continually adds more, um, more control and more tools to it uh, that are available in Photoshop. And it allows you to do things that you can do in Photoshop, but in a much more complicated fashion. So um, it's a really great tool for beginners. It's a really great tool for people that are just learning the different processes in digital uh, imaging. Um, I know that a lot of you that are watching me right now are, are film, uh, film buffs and analog people. Um, and uh, I am too, I mean, I love it, but I've, I've also realized that over the past few years, I've had to become literate in the digital world as well. And to be honest with you, I've come to like it quite a lot. And uh, um, nothing against film, of course, but it, it's become easier for me to travel and to run my tours and things like that when I'm not trying to get film through security and things like that. Although, Daniel Bayer, who came on my last trip, Hey there, Daniel. Um, he came to Faroe Islands with me and didn't go home. He stayed there for seven weeks. 
and he had shipped himself uh, 300 rolls of, of film and tracked it with one of these uh, little Apple tags, Apple tags, uh, he tracked it across the Atlantic and worked out for him. He's back home now and he is uh, processing his film and things are working out great for him. So, and his imagery is fantastic. So I think I'll throw a link down in below to Daniel's stuff as well. Um, but anyway, I'm back here to my image, uh, the, the, uh, the image that we shot today. So what I like to do is uh, I catalog it and I, I catalog it ahead of time in, in Lightroom and then I do my initial work on it in Lightroom. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go from the library, we're going to open it up, the image that we're working on, and we're going to go into the develop uh, toggle here, <coughs> uh, the develop module that's in there. And as you can see over here on the right, we have a lot of different controls. Now I'm going to put on my glasses because I can't see them as well as I used to. And now uh, I've got all kinds of controls over here. You know, we've got exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, you know, all the way down to presence. Um, you know, I can do color grading. I can do split toning. I can do all kinds of things. I can change this into a black and white. I can uh, add in, um, you know, gradient fills, I can add in brushwork, I can do all kinds of things in Lightroom now that used to be only um, available to you in Photoshop, but uh, as I like said, as they're upgrading Lightroom, and I am at like, uh, it's 2022, I'm, at I'm on Lightroom Classic right now, um, Lightroom 4 catalog, I'm not really sure what version I'm on, but uh, Anyway, it's the one that came out with the new masking effect also, and I'll get into that in some future videos, uh, not right now. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to show you what we do here, what I do here, is I'm going to go on this image right away, and I'm just going to initially upgrade the, or enhance the exposure a little bit. Now, I'm going to pull it up a little bit, but nothing like that other one was, which was up here. I'm going to bring it back down to about here, where I can still see that I have detail down here in this highlight area. Now, as you can see, it's still pretty dark in the shadows here, and I do like that. I mean, that's one of the things that I wanted. I wanted some selective lighting in there. But I would like to lighten that up a little bit. I mean, one of the ways that I can do that is by adding a gradient, uh, um, uh, um, you know, a gradient mask in there. So what I can do is I can go to a, a linear gradient, and I can bring this up from the bottom. And as you can see, it puts the, uh, the red cast in where I am going to be uh, working. Now, what I'm going to do in there is I'm just going to bring up the exposure just a tad down in there. You know, very, very little bit, as you can see I'm doing right here. Now, I can bring it up quite light, but I don't want to do that. I want to still have some selective lighting and shadowing in there, as I explained before. But as you can see, I can bring that up, and it brings up a little bit of detail down inside of the, uh, the area of this little puddle of the spring. Now, also, I can work on that by bringing up my shadows a little bit. So I'm going to go over here to my shadow slider, and I'm going to bring up the shadows just slightly so that I can see into that pool there. So there, I like that that way. And now you can see when I bring my cursor back into the frame, it shows me, again, the basic outline of where my, uh, my linear gradient is. Now, um, I mean, I like that as it is right there. So I'm going to stay, I'm going to stop and I'm going to hit return. Now, when you hit return, it kind of locks that in and it allows me this little area where I can still light up the tool. If I hit it again, return, I've locked in that, um, that uh, adjustment that I've made. Now, I can always go back and, and remove that adjustment, but what it does now is it allows me to move to go in and do another adjustment. Now, another thing that I like to do here is with this sky, I want to bring up the intensity of the sky a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another, I'm going to go up here to masking and I'm going to create a new mask and I'm going to go to another linear gradient. And this time I'm going to drag it down from the top. And I'm going to drive it, drag it a little past the horizon, but as you can see, I'm going to leave it to where it's a little bit pinkish around the area where it's more highlighted in the, uh, in the sky. And I am going to go right there. And what I'm going to do here is rather than work on the exposure, I'm going to work on the uh, clarity of the image. And so I'm going to kick up the clarity in there a little bit. Just a little bit to outline those clouds a little bit more. I'm going to go into the dehazing function as well because that'll bring it a little bit darker in the sky and add a little bit more contrast between the sky and the clouds. So you can see there where it picks up the clouds a little bit more. I like that. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to hit return twice, and so I've locked in that adjustment. 
Now, one of the things that you can do with uh, Lightroom that's really great is you go up here to your forward slash on your keyboard, and you hit that, and it'll show you where you started. It'll show you the, uh, the image before your adjustments. So you, now you can see what we've done here. We brought things up, made it a little more contrasty, spiked the clouds a little bit so that they've got a little bit more spark to them. Now, one of the benefits that you can see of the neutral density filter that we were using is the fact that this water has all gone to flat water. Now, you'll notice that when we were out there, and you can see in the, uh, the video when I'm explaining this to you, you can see that there are white caps lapping in in the background. Now, if I had shot this in any kind of a normal uh, shutter speed, uh, for that day, which would have been a 60th, a 125th, those waves would have stopped and they would have been back in there in the image and they would have added perhaps to the, the composition, but I wanted to eliminate them from the composition whatsoever. And I did that by doing the neutral density filter. And in that 30 seconds that we made this exposure, there were enough waves lapping through there that it just painted over and over and over again on the sensor and it eventually just obliterated all of the detail that would have been in that water and it gave you what I like to call flat water. Now, uh, it's one of the characteristics of long exposures, of course, uh, whether you're shooting at night or whether you're shooting with a neutral density filter. The same thing is in the clouds. Now, you can see in the clouds here, let me go to full screen. Now, you can see in the clouds here, this nice movement in the clouds. Now, you know, normally this would have been just a white puffy day and you would have taken a, a still image and there would have been the, the waves in there and there would have been the clouds just nice and still, but it adds a lot more interest and it adds a lot more life to the image when you're able to slow down the shutter speed and actually let time enter into your photograph. So as you can see, this is looking pretty nice already. Now, um, what I'm going to do is go back in here and as I say, I go back to the backslash, I can see where I was. Now, um, I'm very much liking this image and uh, I'm trying to think of what I would do other than perhaps spark the highlights up just a little bit more as you can see right there. And what I might do is go in and play around a little bit with another gradient fill up here in the sky. I'm going to add yet another mask, another linear gradient, as you can see. I'm going to drag down in here. And with this one, I'm going to play a little bit with the contrast. As you can see, I can add a little bit more darkness to that blue in the sky with the contrast. So I'm going to pump that up just a little bit. Just a little bit. Now I'm also going to spark the highlights in there just a bit. Now you can see in those clouds, it, it whitens them just a little bit there. But I don't want to take the detail out of them. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking that. Now, hit return once, clear that, lock the masks in. And now I'm going to go back to full frame and I'm looking at this image and I'm thinking, what else would I really like to do in this image? And one of the things is, is that back here in the background, you can see that this, there's this uh, line of trees and this point of land here, and it's just gone to a black point. So what I'd like to do is try to paint a small brush in there and see if I can't bring out a little bit of detail in those trees in the background. I think that might add something to this image, and we'll see if, we, if it works. So what we'll do is we'll go back here. Now I go back up to the masking tool again, and this time I'm going to say create a new mask. And with this, I'm going to create a brush. Now I'm going to go over here and I can change the size of that brush. And as you can see, the brush is sitting in here and I can see the size that I go to. Now I'm going to go down fairly small because I want to drag it through that peninsula there. Now, I'm feathered at 100%. My flow is at 100. I'm going to drop that back to about 50 right now. And then I'm also going to drop back the density to probably about 50. All right, so that gives me a chance to work in the, uh, the image itself and, and, and gives me a chance to paint a little bit more in there. And, and, um, and rather than remove or lighten a big area all at once, it lets me paint in a little bit more. So, okay, now that I've done that, I'm going back over here with the mask and I'm just going to try this out and I'm going to kind of run it over in here into this area. Okay, now we've got that in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here to my contrast and I'm going to play with that first. Flatten out the contrast. I'll play a little bit with the exposure in there. Let me bring up the exposure slightly. And 
I'm going to lighten the shadows. Now, as you can see, you really can't see much in there right now because what I've done is I've gone in and I've just I've lightened that brush. I've made the flow at 50%. I've made the uh, I've made the um, the density at just 50%. But what happens now is if I go back over there after I've set the set the uh, the parameters of what I want to happen within there, I can go back and I can brush into that area and I can just keep brushing and it will lighten up slightly. And I don't want to catch the horizon in there because I don't want to lighten too much of the horizon. But let's see. Now I think I brought a little bit of detail out in there. I'm going to lock that in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom that in. And you can see that I pulled up a little bit in there. You know, it's at least a little bit better than just going completely black. Now I could probably add more in there. But for the time being, I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. OK? That's pretty much it. I, I like the image the way it is right now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the image that I had uh, over, uh, over, um, passed over for this, the one that was slightly lighter. I'm going to go back to that one. Now, the thing about Lightroom that's great is that once I've done these, Im these, uh, these changes, they haven't made these changes to the original file. They've made these changes to a proxy file that I'm working on within the library. Now, what will happen is, is once I export that photograph, it will make, the, it will make those changes to the file that I've, that I've created. It'll create a new file. I can save it as a new file. But the beauty of Lightroom is, is it will never destroy or change that original file that you had in there. So I'm safe there. My horizon is straight. And that's another thing that I told you when we were out on the beach is I just, I, I hate crooked horizons. I mean, there's nothing worse than a crooked horizon in a landscape photograph. Uh, for the reason that I said, it just makes things crooked. It, it plays with the brain. The brain is not comfortable looking at something like that. And even if you don't perceive that the, that the, uh, the horizon is slightly crooked, your brain does. And you, you perceive that something's wrong there. So to correct all that, you just make sure that you've used your masking or your, your cropping tool and you make sure that that, that that horizon is straight. Now I'll look in here and I'll make sure that mine is. And yeah, I'm pretty much there. So anyhow, we're going to stop this. We're going to go back to library. We're going to clear out. Now this is the image. It shows up now as the adjusted image that we worked on. Now I can change that and I can reset it any time. But now it shows on the light table or on my... Uh, my, my light table, so to speak, it shows me the images as I've adjusted it. Now you can see the one next to it here, the, the other one that we're going to work on now. Now this one I'm going to have to tame down rather than this one, which I had to brighten up and bring up a little bit. This one I'm going to have to take back down again. So let's do that. Let's go in here and immediately I'm going to go over to the develop module. And then I'm going to immediately pull down on, on uh, on the exposure, much like the one that we had done on the last, uh, the last image. Now, I'm going to pull back on the highlights as well. And now, as you can see, that brings some detail up here into the, uh, the beach area where it was the most bright. Now, OK, so much the same as I did in the last image. Now, once I've locked that in, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to use a linear gradient. And I'm going to create a new. A uh, gradient, a uh, new linear gradient that I'm going to bring up from the bottom once again. And in that area, I'm going to bring up the exposure slightly. Yeah, real nice. Now with this one, unlike the other one, I'm really not having to do anything in the shadows there because I can see some nice detail in the pool right there. So let's go back here. We'll hit enter twice. I'm getting a lot closer with this image. Now, I want it, the sky is kind of dull. I want to go in there much the same as the last one. I'll create a new mask, linear gradient. And I'm going to drop that down over the sky. And with this one, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit, just a, tear, a hair. I'm going to bring the whites up, spark those clouds a little bit, a little bit with the clarity like we did, some of the dehaze. And there. I'm going to lock that in like that. Now, as you can see, we're pretty close now to that original image. I mean, to the first image that we worked on. It's a little warmer. Now, I can pull a little bit of that out by going to the Develop module, and I can go into the temperature. 
and I can cool it off just a bit. I don't want to go too much because I want that warmth of the sun in there. There we go. Now, let's go back to the library here. And now we can see that these two images, this is the first one, this is the second one. A little warmer, a little more sun. So, then it becomes a choice of which one we're going to go with, right? Now this one, whereas it seems more crisp and more, more, uh, more color, more cool in the color, I like this one because it seems to be a little longer exposure. I'm not sure why that is, but uh, it's got a little bit more movement in the clouds, and I do like that. And as you can see, the sun is a little bit more over the image. So this becomes the dilemma of choice and which way you're going to go with this thing. And what is going to best represent that original uh, picture that you saw in your mind's eye? And to be honest with you, the second choice with the sun and a little bit of a shadow coming out of the side here is a little bit more to my liking. So what I'll do then is I take that and I will edit it in. I'll bring it over into Photoshop. So that opens up a dialog box saying, edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments, and it's yes. So what it's going to do now is it's going to open up that file in Photoshop, and it's going to show me that file in the uh, way that I had worked it out uh, through Lightroom with all of those adjustments. So it's taking a minute to open up here, and there we go. Now we're in Photoshop. I've got the image this way. Now what I would normally do is I would do all my fine tuning in Photoshop. Um, I would zoom in in certain areas, and if this was film that I was working with, I would zoom into certain areas and I'd look for dust spots and little hairs and things like that that I would correct and fix. Or in an image that's done on a digital sensor like this, I would zoom into the areas and I'd look for dust that might be on the sensor itself. Now, I had this lens profession or this uh, camera professionally cleaned when I was over in Iceland, but I have changed the lens several times since then, so there is the possibility that there's dust in there. Now, I won't bore you with that, going through and looking for that part of it, but uh, that would be another part of my routine here. Now, from Photoshop is when I would do all of my printing. I would print everything out of Photoshop. I would do any of my soft proofing out of Photoshop, and I would start to work on my actual finished print that way uh, once I'd moved it in here. But as you can see, this is what, what we did today. Uh, you know, woke up this morning, beautiful uh, snowy morning, and took off to the beach. Uh, made some images and, uh, and, and came back here and worked on them. And here we are. It's all in one day. It's beautiful. And, uh, and I'm glad you came along with me. I'm just noticing those deer tracks that ran through there. Yeah, I really like this image. So um, anyway, I will, uh, I'll, I'll put up a, a, a copy of this someplace, uh, perhaps on my Facebook or perhaps in uh, the Instagram for Northlight Photographic Workshops. Uh, but uh, anyway, thanks for sticking with me here. If you really, uh, if you enjoyed yourself, or you got anything out of this, you know, give me a thumbs up. Um, I'm still trying to get more subscribers, so if you could tell a friend about this. Uh, you know, again, I like to work a lot in alternative processes, but I also like to capture my uh, images in, in, in any way that I can. I mean, it's more about the final print for me. And, uh, you know, so I don't want to all show you all darkroom stuff. I'm learning a lot digitally, and I know a lot digitally now. And, uh, you know, I'll try to share as much of that as I can with you um, going forward here. So anyway, thanks a lot for sticking with me. I had a great day. I hope you did. Uh, so until uh, next time, take care. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.